That's what the black Christian nationalist movement calls on people to do. Experiment with worship. Don't just do what white folks have told you was the way to worship. We ought to try some drums up here on a Sunday morning and see whether the drums fit into a worship service. Quaba family and friends, welcome to this morning's Caramu Festival, celebrating the life of our founder and first holy patriarch, the Reverend Albert B. Clay Jr., respectfully known as Jeremoji, liberator of the people, a Bebe defender, Ajiman, a blessed man. Come and gather round as we share the good news of best self theology that's been found. It's born out of a black theology and a liberating spirit with cries from the ancestors. Can't you hear it? Welcome to this morning's festival of life. We hope to enlighten, inspire, and move you to think twice, once for those that have gone on before, and then again from for those that have something in store. 
Join us as we celebrate the birth of none other, a prophet, a teacher, a friend, a brother. His life dedicated to the service of liberating African people. He is my father, my mother, and my sister's keeper. I shine, you shine, we shine because of his vision. Let us put aside our differences to close the gap of our divisions. Unity, program, and freedom is our goal. It's part of the struggle, I've been told. It takes faith, commitment, and dedication. But before we begin, won't you join me in a prayer of invocation? Let us assume a posture and an attitude for prayer. To Inyame, God of the Ivory Coast, to Yala, God of Liberia, and to the God of our ancestors, we acknowledge your presence and opened our mind, body, and spirits to your gift of life. O oh, cosmic creator, we thank you for upholding your end of the covenant promise. It has sustained us down through the years and has enabled us to witness yet another day in service to you. We rejoice in this day in honoring one of your humble servants, the Honorable Jeremoji Abebe Ajiman. Let us lift his life and strive to exemplify his example of feeding the lost sheep. Encourage our souls and light the path of our not yet traveled journey. Guide our thoughts and deeds and keep us mindful of who and whom we owe our spark of divinity to. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end of all we think, say and do, all that we can conceive. You are truly a source of all existence. Hallelujah in the house of the Lord. You are deserving and worthy of all praise. We entrust this worship experience to your divine oversight. And we pray this in all prayers in the name of our standard bearer, the black Messiah, Jesus. Ashe and amen. The Black Christian Nationalist Creed. I believe that human society stands under the judgment of one God, revealed to all and known by many names. God's creative power is visible in the mysteries of the universe, in the revolutionary Holy Spirit, which will not long permit men to endure injustice, nor to wear the shackles of bondage, in the rage of the powerless when they struggle to be free, and in the violence and conflict which even now threaten to level the hills and the mountains. I believe that Jesus, the Black Messiah, was a revolutionary leader sent by God to rebuild the African nation Israel and to liberate African people from powerlessness and from the oppression, brutality, and exploitation of the white Gentile world. I believe that the revolutionary spirit of God embodied in the Black Messiah is born anew in each generation and that Black Christian nationalists constitute the living remnant of God's chosen people in this day and are charged by him with responsibility for the liberation of African people. I believe that both my survival and my salvation depend upon my willingness to reject individualism. And so I commit my life to the liberation struggle of African people and accept the values, ethics, morals, and program of the black nation defined by that struggle and taught by the Pan-African Orthodox Christian Church. Sing the rising, rising sun. 
chance. We add a little something to it, just to encourage you. We're gonna take you to church later. Let's go! We'll keep marching right until the victory is won. To all my brothers out there. Hold your head up, brother, till the victory is won. To all my sisters in the struggle. Keep believing, sister, till the victory is won. Till that day! Till that day comes. Let us march on. To victory! Brothers and sisters, let us continue to lift those who may be in the grips of life's inevitable challenges. 
We all will travel down the road through the valleys of life. I suggest you turn to the Most High in prayer before, during, and after such times to keep your mind, body, spirits open to receive and to administer the blessings the universe has for you. For our communal prayer, let us turn our collective energies toward sacred obligations, those things we hold near and dear to our hearts, the things we don't let come between us and our relationship with the Creator and creation. For it is, if we did, it would disrupt the harmony of our struggle and mission of liberation. Sacred obligations include our service, our sacrifice, and our gifts, resources we all possess, yet we often underutilize. So we pray for greater insight to understanding the necessity of maintaining our sacred obligations. Won't you pray with me? O oh, divine protector, healer, and way maker, we humble ourselves before you and entreat your influence upon matters sacred and uncompromising. We recognize our condition and have floundered much too long in the pool of procrastination. We seek you now, O oh, great goddess of creation, to stir in us the sediments of discipline and hope to fulfill our commitment to building your kingdom of power and peace on earth. Free us now, O oh God, from our personal attachment to things of the world so that we can utilize our gifts for a program of liberation. Open our mind's eye that we may see a greater good of consistently giving to you first before fulfilling our individual wants. We recognize that you fulfill our needs and we thank you, Jehovah, instill in us the capacity to see beyond our selfish desires and to recognize that our sacrifice moves us closer to our covenant promise with you. We love and adore you, O cosmic intelligence, and we pray these words fall upon fertile ground. Lest we forget, it is our sacred obligations of service, gifts, and sacrifice that honor those that have paved the way for us. To them we say thank you. But by continuing to give unselfishly, we demonstrate that their work was not in vain. We send this collective petition to you, asking it in all prayers in the name of our revolutionary example, the Black Messiah Jesus. Ashe and let the faithful say, Amen. Everybody knows police brutality exists. For police officers to take our time to waste the time of an entire nation talking about they never heard of police brutality, they don't know what black people are talking about, they can't prove it. We know in Detroit, any time a black person is uh, brutalized by the police, he goes into court and he's arrested for assault and battery. Now the basic issue is so simple and nobody will even touch it because you're afraid to touch it. You are deliberately trying to evade the issue. Everybody is trying to the thing is that in the United States, we are engaged in a power struggle between black people and white people. You don't want to say it. You don't want to hear it said. You want to talk to somebody else. you got a nut sitting there someplace who says he's a police official who hasn't said one thing all night. There is a power struggle going on, and black people have decided they're not going to tolerate oppression any longer. Now, police brutality is a very deliberate thing. It's a part of American life. America has decided that black people are to be kept in subjection. It's an army of occupation that the white power structure keeps in the black ghetto. We know, now don't talk about they are, they are, how, what is the incident? We know what it is. The structure knows it. White people know it. Throughout America, white people know what white policemen are doing. You know what it is. Everybody knows what it is. Now, black people are not going to permit police brutality to go on. If police brutality continues, we'll have it in 200 cities next summer. Now, white people know that. Something has got to be done about it. Happy birthday to that fiery preacher from Detroit, the Honorable Jeremoji Abebe Ajima, also known as Reverend Albert B. Clay Jr., who has always believed that black lives matter. He was born on June 13, 1911, to Dr. Albert Buford Clegg, Sr. and Pearl Reed Clegg in Indianapolis, Indiana. He was educated in the Detroit Public Schools, graduating from Northwestern High School in 1929. He was a graduate of Wayne State University and Oberlin Graduate School of Theology. 
He also attended Fisk University and completed more than two years towards a doctorate in visual education at the University of Southern California. Following his graduation from Oberlin, he passed to churches in Lexington, Kentucky, Springfield, Massachusetts, and San Francisco, California. Jim Moser believed that the church should minister to the needs of the community. Thus, he confronted the social, economical, and political injustices people face as well as their spiritual and moral needs. He left the St. Mark's Presbyterian Church in 1953 to organize his own church, which eventually became the Shrines of the Black Madonna No. 1 at Linwood and Hogarth in Detroit, Michigan. From the pulpit of Shrine 1, Jeremoji attacked injustice, racism, and inequality. With fervor, he stirred up the people by organizing boycotts to gain managerial positions for black people in local businesses. He was active in efforts to improve city schools. He organized political campaigns, founded the Freedom Now Party, along with the Illustrated News, a bi-weekly news publication. In 1964, he ran for governor of the state of Michigan, the first black man to do so since Reconstruction. He was instrumental in the 1963 Detroit Freedom March. He shared platforms with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. and Malcolm X. In 1963, Jeremoji collaborated with the group on advanced leadership goal to bring Malcolm X to the King Solomon Baptist Church in Detroit, where Malcolm delivered his famous message to the grassroots speech. He and his brother Henry Clay founded the Black Slate Incorporated a nonprofit public relations and advertising group which helped elect Mayor Coleman Young, Barbara Rose Collins, Sister Makunda, and Carolyn Sheeks Kilpatrick, Sister Nataki, to the U.S. House of Representatives. As a theologian, Jeremoji coined the phrase Black Theology. In 1968, his bestseller, The Black Messiah, was published and translated into 14 different languages. In 1972, his work Black Christian Nationalism New Directions for the Black Church was published. His works are still required reading in seminars and schools of religion throughout the world. The founding of the Shrine of the Black Madonna of the Pan-African Orthodox Christian Church has been his most significant achievement. It was during the development of the shrine that Reverend Clay was reborn, Jeremoji Abebe Ajiman, which means liberator of the people, defender, blessed man. As the church's holy patriarch, and master teacher. He offered almost 50 years of leadership to the young and old alike. In the shrine, he devised a program of transformation, both for the individual and for the conditions under which people lived. He developed a leadership body of skilled, changed, and committed brothers and sisters capable of carrying on the work of the church in his absence and after his death. He expanded his church to Atlanta, Georgia, Houston, Texas, and a 3,500-acre farm called Beulah Land in Calhoun Falls, South Carolina, where the church is now in Liberia, Africa. Jeremoji made his transition on Beulah Land on Sunday, February 20, 2000. Happy birthday, Jeremoji and baby Ajiman. Thank you for making Black Lives Matter. <laughs>
from the cause All I can do is just thank Him Oh yes I will And now I say Good morning. It's my pleasure to bring you greetings from Shrine 9 in Atlanta, Georgia, on this significant occasion. Today is the birthday of our founder, Reverend Albert B. Clegg, Jr., the Honorable Jeremoji Abebe Ajiman. And today we want to pay tribute and homage to his legacy and his vision for a liberated Pan-African world. As the founder of Black Christian Nationalism, the original architect of black liberation theology, Albert Clay Jr.'s legacy is that he established a vision and a program for the black church, one that would mold it into an instrument for the black liberation struggle. Since the church is the only institution black people own and control, Jermoji thought, why not transform it into an institution that can actually serve the needs of black people? and not continue to be an escapist institution that works primarily to perpetuate our oppression and convince us to receive our reward in the afterlife. Self-determination in the here and now is the goal and lens through which he read the Bible, interpreted the gospel, and preached Christianity. His legacy is that he turned the black church into an instrument for black power and black liberation. And we are the keepers of his legacy, the ones charged with ensuring that the goal of black self-determination is achieved. I chose as a topic for this sermon, do you want to be made well? A tribute to our founder. Do you want to be made well? A tribute to our founder. I take my scripture from the sermon for this sermon from the gospel according to John chapter 5 verses 1 through 8 it's a scripture with which you're probably familiar in fact you may have heard reverend candia use this same pericope last week i want to see if i can approach it from a different angle according to scripture it reads now in jerusalem by the sheep gate there is a pool in these lay many invalids, the blind, the lame, and paralyzed. 
One man was there who had been ill for 38 years when Jesus saw him lying there a long time. He said to him, do you want to get well? The sick man answered, sir, I have no one to put me into the pool when the water is stirred up. And while I am making my way, someone else steps down ahead of me. And then Jesus said, get up, pick up your own mat and walk. At once the man was made well. When I think about the legacy of our founder, the Honorable Jeremoji Abebe Ajiman, I think about this story from the Gospels. Because in this story, you have a man who is trapped and imprisoned, not just physically, but also psychologically. 38 years before this encounter with Jesus, he somehow made it to the side of a pool of water at Bethesda that he had heard had healing powers. And for 38 years, he waited for someone else to put him into the pool so he could one day get exposure to the healing properties in the water and be cured of his blindness and paralysis. You see, the man was seeking healing. But the problem is he was seeking assistance from sources that were unreliable. Sources that could not be counted upon. He was seeking healing from unreliable sources outside of himself. And so for 38 years, he waited and waited and waited for his turn to get in the water. For 38 years, he waited for his breakthrough, waited for his miracle to come. He waited for his big break to come from God in the form of healing waters that would cure his physical ailments. And this is why when Jesus encountered him, Jesus asked him pointedly, do you want to get well? Do you want to be made whole? According to the story, the man responded with a whole lot of excuses. Do you want to be made well? Yes, but people ignore me and walk on by. I want to be made well, but when I try to get in, somebody jumps in front of me. I'd like to be healed, but this excuse and that excuse. Jesus finally told the man, get up, pick up your own mat and walk. And the man got up and walked. And the Bible doesn't say Jesus touched him. It doesn't say Jesus laid hands on him, gave him some miracle cure. It doesn't say he performed a divination. He simply told the man to get up. Pick up your own mat and walk. You see, for me, this story is the essence of the legacy of our founder, Jeremoji Abebe Ajman, who taught us the gift of self-determination. Just like Jesus with this man, Jeremoji taught and ministered to a people who were psychologically and spiritually impaired and paralyzed people who had suffered in America for almost 400 years under brutal racial oppression, often subject to vicious white supremacist violence from the period of slavery through Jim Crow and the era of lynchings. And like Jesus, his basic message to us was, do you want to get well? Do you want to be made whole? If you want to get well, then we can't continue to rely on a religion that is only perpetuating our oppression. If you want to get well, you can't continue to rely upon an interpretation of the faith that tells you to look for healing and salvation and redemption outside of yourself. That's a dangerous religion. That's a destructive theology. It actually starts with the idea of original sin, which said you were born with a problem, born with a defect, born with a depraved nature, and you can't fix it alone and no one else can fix it. Only God can fix it. So just wait on God to fix it because you can't do anything about it yourself. 
And then we were told that because our ancestors came from West Africa and didn't know anything about original sin or redemptive suffering or practicing religion from a book, we were ignorant. We were told we were ignorant on top of being sinful. We were told we had a double mark against us. George Kelsey called it the double fall. This means black people suffer from the original fall of Adam with the rest of the world, but then we also suffer from a second racial fall because we come from backwards Africa. We were taught a religion that kept us paralyzed by fear and feelings of inferiority. Jeremoji said, do you want to get well? Do you want to get well? If you want to get well, then you got to do some things differently. First of all, stop looking for salvation outside of yourself. Jesus is not going to come back on wings of glory to save you from the hell that is your life. Nobody is going to save you from your inferiority complex. Your big break is not coming. Your big escape from blackness is not coming. Nothing is going to wash you and make you white as snow. He said, if you want to be saved, we have to save ourselves through our willingness to struggle and sacrifice and work on behalf of one another. We have to work together. He taught us the difference between good religion and bad religion. A bad religion turns the Bible into a fetish and says, if you can just memorize and quote the right scriptures, you can be saved. If you just confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, that's all you have to do. Bad religion teaches us that redemptive suffering and forgiving the oppressor and loving your enemy is what God wants you to do. But if we just if that if we just love and forgive those that despise us and lynch us and commit violence against us with no accountability, if we just love them enough, they will somehow change their ways and love us back. That's bad religion. Good religion forces you to confront the question, do you want to be made well? Good religion teaches us how to save ourselves through self-determination. Our founder's greatest legacy is his program for, for the transformation of the black church. He said the black church can't continue to operate in the way that it, in the way that it has. Yes, it's helped us to survive slavery. But it has to change its theology and program if it's going to be an instrument for our liberation. Because at this point in, our, in time, nothing is more sacred than the liberation of black people. Not the Bible, not the cross, not Jesus himself, not the communion wafer, not the rituals of the church. Nothing is more sacred than the liberation of black people. And so we have to approach the faith from that perspective. Once we accept that truth, then the church can be transformed and used to facilitate our liberation and stop being an institution that perpetuates our oppression. And this simple truth that nothing is more sacred than the liberation of black people made the church appealing to a younger generation who were fighting for black power and didn't, didn't want to be associated with a religion that made excuses for black powerlessness and racist white grievance. Like the man at the pool, too often we make excuses for our condition. Jermoji told us to stop making excuses for racism. Stop making excuses for white hostility. Stop making excuses for white liberal inaction and neoliberal individualism and greed. What I'm actually talking about is what's often called respectability politics, which we too often learn in the black church. Just like the man by the pool, we've been making excuses that keep us paralyzed. You've heard other people say it before. Well, if black people would just become more educated, 
then they could get ahead. If black men would just dress appropriately and stop wearing hoodies at night, you wouldn't look so threatening. If black people would just stop killing each other through black on black violence, if black people would just comply with the commands of the police officers, if black people would just forgive and be conciliatory and less angry, if black people would respect American values and assimilate white cultural norms, then you would be treated better. That's the solution. Be respectable. We've been sitting by the American pool with respectability politics for 400 years, waiting for white folks to change their minds about us, waiting for their conscience to be pricked, for moral suasion to finally work. And nothing has worked. In fact, white rage and white grievance has has increased, especially in the last four years. You see, Donald Trump is just a symbol. He's not the source of this. He merely reflected back a rage, a hatred and a feeling of victimization that was always there. And this white rage continues even as Trump has been deplatformed and taken off the stage. White rage and terrorism continues unabated and unchecked. Just think about the last 100 years. From Tulsa, Oklahoma, and the destruction of Black Wall Street in 1921, to the January 6th insurrection in 2021, there's been no accountability. From the bombing of the 16th Street Baptist Church in, in, in Birmingham, Alabama in 1963, to the mass shooting in Emmanuel AME Church in 2015, there is still no accountability, no commissions, no policies to deter white terrorism. No one's held responsible. And we're just supposed to get over it and move on. And it's not just here, but throughout the world. Not just domestically, but also internationally. You see, I'm old enough to remember the war in Iraq. You recall there were supposed to be weapons of mass destruction. To this day, there's been no accountability, no consequences, no atonement, no reparations for brutal displays of white rage and power here and around the world, whether it's 1921 or 2021. We've got to stop making excuses and blaming ourselves and our people for the way in which this country has failed us. Our founder said, at some point, we got to look reality in the face. Do you want to be made well? Then get up, pick up your own mat and walk. He made theology and religion relevant to young people who sincerely wanted to do something about the problems we face, but didn't know what to do or how to do it. And in order to keep his memory and his legacy alive today, we must continue to speak to young people who want to do something about the problems we face, but don't know what to do or how to do it. The young folks in the Black Lives Matter movement are turned off by the church and church leadership. Just like the young people in the Black Power movement two generations ago were turned off by the traditional black church. Stokely Carmichael rejected the Christian demand to love the oppressor and practice nonviolence. He said the issue is not one of Christian morality. It's not about moral suasion. It's not about appealing to people's hearts. It's about raw power. And so what we need is not more universal love, but black power. Today's young activists are also turned off by the church. They're turned off by a sexist and heterosexist church leadership that continues to adhere to patriarchal gender norms and marginalize black folks who don't present as respectable to the white majority. And young people today continue to be turned off by a conception of God that continues to say, wait on your healing, wait on your deliverance, 
Wait on your salvation. Be patient. Go slow. Forgive your enemy and accept marginal, incremental, watered down reform. Just wait on the Lord. Somebody will eventually come by and put you in the pool to give you some healing. Jeremoji taught us we don't have to wait. We don't have to go slow and pray for deliverance. We don't have to depend on other people to do for us what we can do for ourselves. We can determine our own fate. We can take control over our lives with the power of God on our side. Through the church, we can build our own institutions that we own and control. We can reclaim the land and restore the portions of the earth that were stolen from us by white lynch mobs and immoral neoliberal practices. Salvation must be a collective effort, a community endeavor. It's not an individualistic goal. We're either saved as a group or we'll continue to suffer as a group. Do you want to be made well? The biggest tribute we can make to our founder is to provide the next generation with the tools they need to continue the struggle and do the work of community building. And we have to do it in a way that meets them where they are. We have to offer a creative and adaptable theology that adjusts with the times, that doesn't offer a simple racial analysis that is devoid of any consideration of gender, class, or sexuality. And we have to connect that analysis to the impending threat of ecological destruction. We have to reclaim the land and restore the earth. The Pan-African Orthodox Christian Church must be the home for a critical race and theological development analysis and program with Beulah Land at the center. And if we do this, our people won't be dependent on what somebody else can do for us. We'll be self-sufficient. We won't have to wait on the generosity and the charity of others. We won't have to hope that folks have a change of heart and then complain and lament when they don't. We won't have to say, there's no one to put me in the pool. Jesus said, do you want to be made well? If the answer is yes, then stand up, pick up your own mat, and walk. God bless you today. On this day, June 13, 2021, we celebrate the 110th birthday anniversary of the Honorable Reverend Albert B. Clegg, Jr., known to many as Jermoji Abebe Ajiman. In the tradition of our African heritage, we pour libation as an expression of homage for the life of one who is now among the living ancestors of antiquity. For Jeremoji Abebe Ajima, beloved founder, master teacher, and first holy patriarch of the shrines of the Black Madonna of the Pan-African Orthodox Christian Church in South, who lived and kept the covenant faith in South, who gave his sweat blood and tears for the uplifting of his race in Saab, who gave us black Christian nationalism, new directions for the black church in Saab, who taught us that nothing is more sacred than the liberation of African people in Saab, who gave modern Christianity the gift of Kua, the rediscovery of ancient African sciences of spiritual renewal and rebirth in South, who gave us the vision of Beulah Land, a place of healing, restoration, transformation, and empowerment for our people everywhere in South who struggled and fought in this life that his people might be free in sight. We give thanks and praise in honor of your rich legacy in sight.
and may your spirit ever be filled with light and the power of the cosmos. And may that light and power lead and guide those of us still here on this side through the darkness of our times inside. We pour water into the earth whence you rest to commemorate your spirit and sacrifices inside. Ashe and Amen. Brothers and sisters, if you were moved by the Holy Spirit during our virtual village experience today, then I invite you to learn more about our Best Self Movement. There are three ways to connect with us. First, go to our webpage at www.shrinesoftheblackmadonna.org. Once you're there, scroll down the page until you see a tab on the right that reads, join our email list. Enter your email address and click subscribe. One of our ministers will then reach out to you in a timely manner. Now, if you are interested in joining this very powerful move of the Creator, in that case, there is a tab on the left that reads, Join the Shrine. Click on that tab, enter your name, your phone number, a physical address, and your email address. One of our pastors will then reach out to you to talk to you about becoming a member of our Best Self Movement. Just below that tab is a link that will take you to a message from our presiding bishop, Jeremoji Menali Kimati, which shares more information about what we believe, our faith, and our mission as a church. Finally, you can reach us through our virtual office by calling 833-833-0755. We look forward to reaching out to you so that together, we can build a Pan-African world community with power. Be blessed. Brothers and sisters, we come now to the time where we act upon our practice of self-determination, which sustains the many institutions of the Pan-African Orthodox Christian Church. The Shrines of Detroit, Atlanta, Houston, our cultural centers, the Beulah Land Farms Incorporated, PAOCC Liberia, all were built upon the sacrificial giving that makes cooperative economics more than just an ideal, but a dream realized. Your financial support helps to keep our ministries in every region of the country relevant, transforming, and productive. As you donate today, make your tax-deductible donation by credit, debit, PayPal, direct deposit, or by check to the P.O. Box of your local region. Thank you for your sacrificial giving, which reflects the self-giving of our standard bearer, Jesus, the Black Messiah. May God bless you for your tithing gift today, and we thank you for your continued support. Juneteenth commemorates the end of slavery for enslaved Africans in the United States of America. On June 19, 1865, federal troops arrived in Galveston, Texas to take control of the state and ensure that all enslaved people were free. Their arrival occurred two and a half years after the signing of the Emancipation Proclamation. Why did it take so many years for the news to reach African American people in some of the slaveholding areas? The news was deliberately withheld by enslavers to maintain the labor force on the plantations. Federal troops waited for slave owners to reap the benefits of one last cotton harvest before going to Texas to enforce the proclamation. Today, Juneteenth is considered the longest running African-American holiday. Across the country, African-Americans celebrate this day in a variety of ways, including rodeos, parades, street fairs, performances, and more. Juneteenth continues to grow as a global recognition of the resiliency of African people and her descendants. It allows us to remember our ancestors' resilience in the face of the horrific condition of slavery and bequeaths us the determination to rebuild our lives back to the greatness we held before the ordeal of slavery. 
celebrate with us as we celebrate with you. Happy Juneteenth. Let's continue with coffee, community, and conversation at our virtual coffee hour right after today's service. We'd love to meet, greet, and get to know you. Join us via Zoom, meeting ID 856-196-31208, phone ID 346-248-7799. Get to know your Pan-African world community virtually at our virtual coffee hour coming up next via Zoom. Family, we thank God for using Bishop Jawanza to deliver this morning's powerful message and also his, to provide his keen insight to the life and legacy of Jeremoji of Bebe Ajima. Once again, we posthumously celebrate the birth of our founder and celebrate his life's work for continuing to build power towards a Pan-African world and Pan-African liberation. If you've been moved to join us or to join our Best Self Movement, we encourage you to visit our website, www.shrinesoftheblackmadonna.org. Click the Join the Shrine tab and provide some minimal contact information. One of our ministers will get back to you in a timely manner. As always, we extend an open invitation to convene again next time on one of our streaming platforms. Join me now for a prayer of benediction. O Cosmic Creator, we prepare now to depart from this virtual worship experience. As we close, we leave our spirit, body, mind open to you. We pray our eternal love continues to comfort, strengthen, and heal each of us who continues to seek the abundant life through you. Lord, our provider and protector, we seek your power in our daily struggle for self-determination and liberation. Lead us and guide us along this sacred earthly journey. We ask this in all prayers. In the name of our revolutionary example, Jesus of Nazareth, Ashe, and Amen.